The second developer preview of Android 15 is here. Android 15 DP2 adds some user interface elements to ensure a more consistent user experience for devices that support satellite connectivity. As you can see here, it's like a system notification says you're auto-connected to satellite. This update also adds some new APIs that apps can use to detect when a device is connected to satellite and also lets SMS RCS apps use satellite connectivity to send and receive texts. Android 15 is also adding better support for clamshell folding folds, aka flippables. There's a new property that developers can use to show their app on the cover screen of flippables. This is opt-in though, and only works on select flippables that add support for this feature. Another feature is that apps can add support for detecting when a screen is being recorded. So apps that are performing sensitive operations can use this to tell when they're being recorded, and then they can inform the user about it. Unfortunately, Google didn't share a screenshot of what cover screen support looks like or what the screen recording detection looks like. So you just, you just have to use your imagination right now. Android is making some big changes to the PDF rendering API. The previous version of the API that apps could use basically just supported print previewing. Whereas this new iteration of the PDF rendering API allows for more advanced things like rendering password protected files or annotations. And this is being backported to Android 11 and later through an update to a project mainline module. There's also a bunch of other things like an observe mode in the NFC stack that lets supported devices listen but not respond to NFC readers. A new API that let apps, instead of the OS, decide how much to dim SDR elements on screen so that they don't look too dim right next to HDR elements. As you can see here, there's an image on the left and an image on the right. And if you dim SDR photos too much next to HDR photos, then it can make the SDR photos look really bad in comparison. And then there's also a support for the CTA-2075 standard that helps apps reduce audio loudness inconsistencies. But this requires that the audio content itself provides some loudness metadata and that the app that's playing the audio also supports this new API. And there's a whole bunch of other changes in this blog post. And a lot of it's kind of nitty gritty developer focused. So if you're a developer, I highly recommend you actually go through and read this full blog post. But if you're actually interested in finding out what's new in Android 15 DP2 and you install it on your device, there's a couple of minor changes that have carried over from Android 14 QPR3, but there's also some bigger ones, including this new audio sharing page that you'll find when you open up settings and go to connected devices. This page has a toggle that lets you share audio, and this enables others to listen to your media along with you, so long as you have compatible headphones. And this audio sharing feature specifically is referring to AuraCast, which is the marketing term for Bluetooth LE audio broadcasts. Basically, you have a source device, in this case would be your Android phone, starts a broadcasting a signal over Bluetooth low energy that other AuraCast supporting devices nearby can pick up on. They can join your AuraCast session to listen to whatever you're listening to. They don't directly join or pair with your device like traditional Bluetooth works. Think of AuraCast more like a radio broadcast over the air that your car picks up. Android supported AuraCast since Android 13, but Google's kind of making it more prominent and easier to create and join sessions through a new settings page in Android 15. And of course, this requires your device to actually have the hardware to support LE Audio and AuraCast, which not every device does. The next major change is a fix to the Android webcam feature that I've been complaining about a lot. They're finally adding a mode that allows you to take full advantage of the camera sensor on your Pixel phone. So if you boot up Android 15 TP2 on your Pixel and you open up the webcam feature, you'll notice there's now this new HQ button in the top left. And Selecting this enables the high quality mode, which basically disables some thermal optimizations so that you can take full advantage of the full quality of your camera. And if you're wondering how much different is the quality, I actually did like a YouTube video right here just showing the quick comparison, like the standard mode. You can see right here, just me acting a little derpy. And then I switch over to the high quality mode. Like there's more detail on my face all around. And if you're wondering, does this actually impact the battery life and does it make your phone overheat? Well, coincidentally, I actually enabled this feature while I was recording episode, I believe, 35 of the podcast. And I ran it for about two and a half hours. And I think my phone battery level only dropped about 8%. And that was because I was using a slow charging cable. And also my Pixel 8 Pro's battery temperature only reached a peak of about 
37.6 degrees Celsius, which is not at all very hot. So I wouldn't be really concerned about this high quality mode's effect on your Pixel devices like battery longevity or its lifespan. So I would enable it once it rolls out for your device. And of course, not every device supports this Android webcam feature. Right now, mostly only Pixels do. But a feature that will be coming to more devices, especially large screen devices like tablets and foldables, is a toggle to switch back to the old taskbar style. So in Android 12L, Google introduced this taskbar style that you can see here. It spans the entire width of the display, and it's always persistent on screen unless you held down on an empty area and then you could hide it manually. That kind of took up too much space on foldable. So in Android 13 QPR2, they revamped the taskbar. So you have this kind of pill-shaped bottom bar at the bottom, and that only appears temporarily when you swipe up from the bottom. So this is the new style on the right, and this is the old style on the left. The old style is better for multitasking because it's always on screen, so you can easily switch between apps and easily launch apps in split screen. The new style is better for saving screen real estate. If you want to switch back to the old style, you know, to do some more work and switch between apps, this new always show taskbar toggle, which you can access by long pressing on any empty spot on the taskbar, will let you switch between the old style and the new style for the taskbar. And this is available on large screen devices. And it depends on whether or not the OEM actually implements it. This is available right now on Pixel Tablet and Pixel Fold, but other OEMs like OnePlus, Samsung could offer this feature if they wanted to. Right now, like the OnePlus Open, for example, it has a taskbar, but it only uses the old persistent style of taskbar. Next up is a feature for foldables so basically, Google has added a new way to transition apps from the inner screen of a foldable to the outer screen of a foldable. And I'm going to play a little video right here. As you can see on the inner screen, this user had Telegram open. Then they closed their Pixel Fold, and they opened it up after the swiping on the lock screen, and they were able to continue using Telegram on the outer display. So previously on the Pixel Fold, you couldn't choose when you wanted to transition an app from the inner screen to the outer screen you only had the option of transitioning apps that are full screen. So like a full screen game or a full screen YouTube video would transition. But now you have this new swipe up to continue toggle in the display settings on the Pixel Fold that allows you to choose specifically which app you want to transition. And this is actually borrowed directly from the OnePlus Open. It, in fact, the same setting has the same name on the OnePlus Open. And I personally think this is the superior way to handle transitioning from the unfolded to the folded state because you know you can pick and choose which apps you want on the z fold 5 in comparison you have to go into settings and specifically pick the apps from an app list that you want to be able to transition like that so this is coming to any foldable that wants to implement it right now it's only available on the pixel fold on android 15 db2 but other foldables could also add it uh, next up it's the built-in app archiving feature it's live and fully functional in db2 and it works exactly like how i described in this article i wrote for android authority honestly the biggest change in android 15 is that for the app archiving feature it was previously an exclusive to the google play store but now on android 15 there are APIs that Google has added that can be used by third-party launcher and third-party app store developers to add support for app archiving. So this video I'm playing right here quickly just demonstrates the app archiving feature. I archive the Uber app and that significantly reduces the storage size. It goes from like 400 megabytes to like 18 megabytes, a dramatic difference. And then I just tap on the icon after it's archived, it re-downloads it from the Play Store, and then I'm booted back into it without losing any data. That's the TLDR of app archiving. If you're familiar with iOS at all, they have a feature called offload apps, and it works pretty much the same, like in practice. But under the hood, of course, it's different since it's a different operating system. And lastly, you'll notice that after you update your phone to DP2, you are now required to authenticate yourself before you're allowed to change a USB mode. So as you can see in this photo right here, I have this biometric prompt dialog that's asking me to verify my fingerprint before I can change the USB mode between any of the two. This is honestly a pretty minor security change, but you might find it useful if you share your device and you don't want someone, I don't know, like plugging your phone into their PC and dumping your files on their PC without your permission. There are some other changes that I haven't talked about in Android 15 DP2. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of things mentioned on this blog post I didn't talk about. Also, some other stuff that I didn't talk about that's actually in the build that I talked about on my usual deep dive Twitter thread. 
So if you're interested in learning more, I highly recommend you go through those two resources.